Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We have just celebrated very hard for about a week now. And uh, I think some of us have gotten worn out. <laughs> anyway, I'm glad to be here today. Uh, and we're going to start off without a prelude because we don't have a pianist. But we'll go straight to the video with the seven principles. We will now sing hymn number 360 and borrow Keith King and the Choir of Here we have, here we have gathered. Here we have gathered. 
Anybody else? Last chance. <laughs> This morning, we are indeed honored to have Robin Richard as our speaker. I want to read you a little bit of the biography that she sent to me. Robin Richard advocates for and creates stories and content about African Americans' experience, history, and development in the American visual and vocal conversation. She's the creative director for Robert, Robert Romino Productions and works in community through the Kukua, the Kukua Institute, a nonprofit organization located in historic Belmont and Billiards, with a vision to discover, grow, share, and celebrate African American stories through art history, science, and technology. Developing projects for print, broadcast, and programs, her work has included television projects such as Inside Voices TV, the Pensacola Network Show, Connecting the Community, and her. Her documentary, Belmont the Billiards, The Making of a Neighborhood, has been seen and heard on public television, in public spaces, and in public conversations. She has written two books, has contributed stories to other books, documentaries and magazines, and has written articles for newspapers. Robin has served the community as a board and committee member with the Florida Folklife Council, Visit Pensacola, Kukua Institute, Voices of Pensacola Advisory Council, Pensacola Community Action Network, Historic Brownsville Community, the Belmont Debaters Neighborhood Association, and many others. Robin's other work includes committee, committees with the University of West Florida, Pensacola State College, School District of Escambia County, Board of County Commissioners, and the development from Southern New Hampshire, I'm sorry, uh, development from Southern New Hampshire University. I messed that up. <laughs> she earned a Master's of Science in Community Economic Development from Southern New Hampshire University. She is honored by the numerous community awards received and grateful to the people whose shoulders on which she stands to continue the important work of valuing everyone's story. For her work around connecting people through community dialogue, she was named in, in 2017 as one of 52 exceptional people nationwide for USA Today's network. We are one nation. That's the name of their project. Robin is married to Lloyd Bouchard, the CEO and cognitive big data system, and they have three beautiful, smart, productive, and kind of adult children. <laughs> and Lloyd is here today. <laughs> and I first, first met Ron at one of her community events. She does networking on Friday nights along with Lloyd um, to help the people in the community get to know each other better, see what resources and things that are available in the community. And now I'm pleased and honored Introduce Dr. Michelle. She's kind enough to give me a little gin in case I stump <laughs> <laughs> You got a good excuse here. My face goes a little off. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is such a beautiful, weird looking at the world. This is such a beautiful. Edifices, even coming in, it, it just it felt really, really good. My husband and I have a blow to y'all about this smart worship. The whole country, so I think we were really digging all of this coming in. It's it's really amazing. I know y'all see it all the time, but it's our first time here, so we um, 
Come on back anytime. The importance are hard to do. Just don't ask me to join the choir. Everybody will come out. <laughs> <laughs> no, the way you joined the choir, I was here listening. <laughs> Uh, so our son in law is sings, Junior sings opera. So make sure you ask Laura Junior <laughs> as to join the choir. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It is really a pleasure to, to be here. I appreciate the invitation. Uh, I think it's probably been a couple of months now from Scott uh, Satterwhite and his wife Lauren. And, uh, then uh, having the exchange, I've uh, known Bill and Paula for a number of years and having the exchange with Paula to help me feel comfortable here. Uh, that's that's really important and I, I appreciate that. Um, then I just found out last night, uh, no, that was Christmas, Christmas Eve, Renee Perry uh, goes here and I did not know that's so one of my favorite people and I put up with my husband Tom, if y'all see me, I'll put up with uh, But I do, do dearly love uh, Renee and all that she stands for and how she connects people um, around um, her love of plants and, and all things great. Uh, that's all they do. So I'm, I'm excited to be here and thank y'all so much. I do want to um, dedicate this talk in honor of two people I knew, one that this world loved and we just found out we lost this morning, um, Mitty Seabrook. Many of you may know her if you were in education. She was a longtime educator, and she was one of the ones who started Kwanzaa in Pensacola um, 30 something years ago. Uh, the, the community celebration. We lost her, and then we lost James Griffin, who joined them as well. James was an accountant and uh, moved back to Pensacola and joined them in that effort. We lost both of them, so just really important. This morning, um, we lost Bishop Desmond Tutu. Um, and so and he lived a long life, and so there is no sorrow in, in him. And I guess there should be no sorrow in losing anybody because we don't know what our dash is. So birth and death, we, don't, we, we want to live our dash. We don't know what that death is. But Bishop Desmond Tutu puts a lot into his nine years. He made this tremendous difference in the world. And so I think that we should definitely celebrate him, even as he loved in the space of struggle and equality, um, moving towards this and a, a priest, uh, uh, an Anglican, I say that, Anglican, a bishop, a priest and, and bishop. So even as he always loved in the face of struggle, and so think about that, how difficult. So we say in the Christian theology, you love your neighbor. I mean, so everybody says, love your neighbor, right? And some religious. And I just saw, heard this joke, Thomas Soprano, so you know, love your neighbor, and the Talmud has one, and the Quran has one, the Bible has one, and Tony Soprano is, and it's, um, so love your neighbor as yourself, right? <laughs> so Tony Soprano says, whack your neighbor the same way you would want to be whacked. <laughs> <laughs> Probably shouldn't mention that with this one. Bishop Desmond Tutu, but anyway, it's not real, well, right? It's, it's about love. But in the face of everything that this brother tried to do for the people of South Africa and helping to free Nelson Mandela, moving them from apartheid, working with uh, President Bonka and uh, F.W. de Klerk, who we just lost as well. Um, but in the face of that, he moved and loved and saw the struggle and kept moving and loved and seeing the struggle. And it didn't matter to him if you were a white South African or a black South African or if they didn't feel the color South African. It didn't matter. He wanted you to do right. And he faced controversy um, and sometimes um, discontentment because of his stance. But he said we are called to love. And so I think that we should celebrate Bishop Desmond Tutu by repeating his name as a friend of mine, a bishop who is in the United Methodist Church, who is no longer with us, saying that if you call someone's name, they are still with you. So would y'all join me in just calling out Bishop Desmond Tutu's name? Bishop Desmond Tutu. So that he lives forever in our hearts. So I'm going to talk about Kwanzaa. <laughs> I am. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting uh, Dr. Milana Karinda, who 
uh, started Kwanzaa back in the 1960s. And I met him specifically on Friday, November 27, 1992. I was uh, in Hawaii, and he had come to Aida, Hawaii, which is on the island of uh, Oahu, to speak at the first lecture of the Kemetic Movement Organization. And this Kemetic Movement, or KMO, was a community-based nonprofit organization that was dedicated to the promotion of educational, cultural, and historical continuity of African people. These were very forward-thinking, history-affirming Black folk who were connecting and sharing and standing strong in their love of self, love of others, and love of life. And they were succeeding well in Hawaii, and they wanted others to join them. I don't know what I was doing there, but I was happy to be there. And to me, Dr. Freeman, he started Kwanzaa because he wanted African Americans to celebrate their heritage, achievement, spirituality, history, culture, all the good, and all the good stuff that this human body uh, can, can take. There's enough negative, and he wanted folks to celebrate the good. He chose Kwanzaa based on the Swahili phrase for first fruits, Matunda Ya Kwanzaa. He added the A. Well, Paula mentioned that she had uh, left off an A, and I said, well, that's the original spelling. There was no A in Swahili. And the seven values, so it means first fruits, the seven values of Kwanzaa the holy idea of the first fruits for that foundation of the celebration. Unity, self-determination, collective work and responsibility, cooperative economics, Nia, creativity, and faith. Now you know this, but I did not try to say the Swahili names, right? <laughs> I told y'all I'm from the country. And I know my limits. As, as, as much as I love Kwanzaa and the celebration, we normally celebrate the community celebration, which usually is on the Saturday uh, after the start of, of Kwanzaa, the seven day um, celebration. And so I said, I know my limits. As a matter of fact, I had some work in Poland in 2019. 2019, and so I joined him at a conference there a few weeks later. He was there about three months. He told me he was working, but y'all, I don't know. I'm just saying. <laughs> he, was, he, was, he was having fun. And so, so we were there, and uh, we took a, took a, we taking a, a break. Uh, I think I was there for a couple of weeks when we were taking a break from the work and, and walking around. And he had met some, some people who had, had become fast friends. and. Uh, so I had tried, because I knew what I was going, I had tried to do some words, right? So you try to, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. And so I had, you know, practice, uh, you know, saying hello, good morning, gendore means good morning. So I, I had that down, you know, correction means excuse me, so if you come up against somebody, you know, pardon me, excuse me, which I did a lot, you know, because most of them are five foot nothing, I'm six foot tall, so, you know, I was bumping off. So it was it was cool. We were we were attending this church, uh, this uh, 15th century church. I think it was like when did Columbus sail the ocean? 1492. So I think it was like right around that time that this church was built. Um, and so it was a Catholic church. And so uh, the young man who was with the Sean is Catholic. And so we were really just excited to 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 go and celebrate his his faith. And, um, but it was just cool to be in this, this 1400s building. And so I said, this would be cool because now I can practice my Polish, right? I'm in, y'all, I'm in. So I'm excited to listen and try to participate. And so they started, and uh, then I just said, okay, this is too much Polish for me. I mean, I wasn't getting it, but I was on the phone. And then the priest came around and was collecting the offerings. I said, good, well, now I'll have a chance to interact, right? So I'm like, getting my, what did I say, good morning, right? Is Jim Dobre, so I'm like, I'm ready <laughs> to say, he comes around with the offering, and you know, and it's, I mean, it is, we're in there, it is standing room only. So imagine this, plus about, I don't know, 400 more people standing room only. We are next to each other. So the priest, and you know he's a priest, because then he's, he's in all of his priestly robes. So he comes around and 
So he says, he's offering, he's putting his bill out, and I'm just thinking I'm getting ready to say, Jindobre, except for I bump up against him and I say, suppression. <laughs> <laughs> Which is me saying, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> he looked at me, he could see I was trying, but I think that was, I think he just kept going. I think we put some money in there and it just kept going. So anyway, I do not try to pronounce the, the Swahili thing in, in reference, I mean in reference uh, in respect to, to the correct pronunciation. So anyway, at this lecture, Dr. Prince spoke about Egypt and the challenge of African history. Now, other than the title, because I still had to look, I don't remember a thing that Dr. Prince said, but I do remember the way that he made me feel included, needed, and valued. Included, needed, and valued. We were at a high school there, and I remember him on the stage, on the auditorium stage, and just his presence and his way and his introduction of Kwanzaa to this audience and his love included, needed, and valued. Almost three decades later, I still remember that feeling on that night. And so that's what I'll focus my conversation on today about Kwanzaa. Feeling included, being needed, and feeling valued. I like being included in things. And I think most of us do, right? This is a call and response, I've got to tell you. Uh, yes. <laughs> we go to a Baptist church now, but I grew up in the United so every now and then we do say amen right on the first time. So most of us like being included in things, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yes. You must have dropped some of my genes too. <laughs> like, like family gatherings and conferences. Uh, conversations, ideas, fun things, eating. In fact, some of my favorite things I like being included on and sharing with others start with their yeah, faith, food, fun, family, friends, french fries. You know, yeah. <laughs> and I surmise that that was the basis of the beginnings of the holiday. That for time immemorial in this country, some folks have not felt included. They may have tried to do everything that life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness espouses, like doing good, loving and helping neighbors, working and contributing, giving and giving shelter, sharing in the economy, etc., etc., etc. Everything that the great promise of this country says. And yet, for some others, it is not enough that this should be enough, simply because of a skin color, a dialect difference, or a hair curl pattern. These folks, I'm not talking about y'all, these folks weaponize law enforcement, the courts, the educational systems, media, housing, politics, public opinion, and even grocery stores against folks who are not included in their unity of service simply because they do not look like them, have a different zip code, speak in a different dialect, wear their hair differently, wear a belt, don't wear a belt, wear shoes, don't wear shoes, put their hair differently. And that hurts. Because they did not feel like they were wanted. Dr. Karina also made me feel needed like my culture, my experiences, my ideas, my history matter and was needed to further this society and this very world. And today there's different sides to this feeling needed. Today we, we have this era of racial reckoning and there seems to be this sort of hashtagness to it, hashtag woke, hashtag you know, whatever. It's a, it's a social media thing. If I spread it, if I get enough likes or looks, then I must be okay. I'm in. And that is because I think because there are so many public murders of so many black and brown folks that we see. It was happening before, but now we see it clearly. And that if I say that I'm privileged or woke, that somehow erases centuries of damage and dishonesty and disease and death of people and a culture and communities and companies that were only trying to live up 
to the great American promise of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I'd like to be needed just because I'm cute. <laughs> yes, but you I are. Say, oh, all right, sister. It's <laughs> <laughs> my amen card over here. You know, this was Jesus' first miracle, right? Uh -huh. so I'm just saying, <laughs> that, you know, well, in the wine, but if it's being, I'm just saying that. <laughs> To be honest, I am concerned about this hashtagness of needing black and uh, brown folk that is a fad. And that if another leader arises again, that okays uh, the take this country back mantra, then it's out with the old, and, or excuse me, out with the new, or in with the old. Or maybe it's out with the old, I don't know, and in with the new. And to tell you the truth, it's a little bit uncomfortable to talk about this out loud. And it may be uncomfortable for some of you to hear, and that's all right. Lord, I go to another church. And this is my perspective. And I'm cool with that, though, because my uncomfortableness allows me to grow out of my shell and into the light. I have a bad joke about being in a shell, too. Y'all ready? Okay. What do you call a butterfly that never leaves its cocoon? A butterfly. <laughs> I got a million of them. Okay, last one. What do you call a ship that never leaves its port? A museum. Right? <laughs> the ships are made to leave its ports. Butterflies are made to leave their cocoon. It's growth and it hurts. But we need to leave our safe harbors to explore and to see and to grow. And in that, it is a bit uncomfortable. And that's okay. Because we deserve that uncomfortableness to grow. How many of us would eat sausage if we saw it being made? <laughs> Nobody's hand went up, right? <laughs> but we love the outcome. And finally, I remember Dr. Karina's talk that I was valued. That my value was intrinsic to my humanness and that that was enough. It didn't matter how much my house cost. It didn't matter how much I paid for my shoes. It didn't matter what store I bought my cucumbers in. It didn't matter what my salary or wage was. It didn't matter how many parents I had in the house or didn't have. It didn't matter how many children I had or in the vernacular today, how many baby daddies I had. It didn't matter. I was valued simply because I was. And that's enough. And that shouldn't cost me anything to give or to get. I had an opportunity to have a conversation with a student, UWS student, communication student. We were talking about gentrification. So you heard Paula say that we we do our work, it feels like we live there most of the time with Belmont and Villers. And we were talking about it because it has been changing over the last 20 to 30 years, and very intentional. And so this idea of gentrification came up. And I told her instead of economic gentrification that I'm concerned about social gentrification. That we pass people, we may be the only ones on the street, and we don't think that they deserve to be there, so we don't say anything. We grab our purses closer. We want to move them out so we can feel better. We stand on their history, but we don't. We want to feel a certain way, or we feel a certain way. Maybe we don't want to, but we do. We blame it on something. Else. So I'm worried about social gentrification, how we move people out to make ourselves feel better. And then we celebrate them a particular month. And feeling valued again shouldn't cost me anything to get and it shouldn't cost me anything to give. I should feel valued because I am. One of my friends has a slogan, I am because you are. I think she got it from someplace else. So cool. That's what she did her business on. I am because you are. And isn't that a nice feeling to be included? 
to be needed and to be valued. So if you want to celebrate the ones, and just remember that you can. You don't have to be African American, as what's his name say on the on, on the movie Undercover Brother, that we're um, black people of all races. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all came from Africa, right? Black people of all races. In fact, I say that you can celebrate it every day of the year. Unity, self determination. Collective work and responsibility, cooperative economics, NIA, creativity, and faith. You can light a proverbial candle in your heart to show others the way to include, need, and value people. All people. That lit candle could lead the way to those in your circles and your circles who are not so hip, who ain't got it going on like y'all do. Who are not as woke. Or as the kids used to say, y'all will say it. Down with OPP, y'all don't even know what that is, do you? Okay, I'm talking to these young people. Oh, I see you, you're my age, I got you. But these young people here, they're like, we have no idea what she's saying. It's an old song, look it up, y'all, okay? You too, down with OPP, okay, all right. And if it means something nasty, I didn't mean that part. I meant the good part of OPP. I mean, it's probably on the same, okay? So again, you can lead, you can light a candle to lead the way for others. If you don't have a candle and you got a match, light that and help somebody else. And that's the beauty of the ones. It's the first fruits. It's the foundation. You do it for yourself as a first fruit, and then you'll light the way for others. So thank you very, very much for this opportunity. I appreciate y'all.
until we meet again. Thank you. Thank you. And I advise you to uh, talk to Robin, and there she is, <laughs> <laughs> and Bowie, and, and learn more. It's an opportunity. It's an opportunity. Thank you. Thank you.